Good morning, everyone. I'm so glad you all are here. We're so excited for this day. And uh, I'm Charles Bacaris, Vice President of Major Gifts here at the university. It's my pleasure to just open us up and uh, we will hear from all of our key folks here. Uh, I'll introduce Dr. Michael Cook uh, and we'll speak for a few moments. And then Dr. Cook, if you turn it over to Dr. Sloan and then Dr. Sloan, you turn it over to Rob Wilson and, and then uh, Rob will come back. I mean, Dr. Sloan will come back after you're done, Rob, and, and do a little dedicatory prayer at the end. So uh, at this point, if I may, just ask Dr. Cook to come forward, please. Thank you all for coming. I'm going to hold on to my notes because otherwise they'll fly away. Um, first of all, thanks again for coming. Uh, I, I want to recognize the board members of the Oakland Foundation who are here. Thank you all. Um, of course, uh, Dr. and Mrs. Sloan, uh, so many of our um, administrations that are here, my colleagues, my wife, who is here. Thank you all. And a um, um, few years ago, actually about a decade ago, I was at a conference and I heard a conference speaker said, state that in the developed world, so largely within the West, uh, the, the world in which we have the best numbers, uh, statistics, um, that there was one licensed mental health professional for every 14,800 people. That's a huge disparity, a huge disparity. And that's just the developed world. And that was pre-pandemic. It's at least doubled, if not tripled uh, since then. So the mental health need is great um, in our world. Many years ago, uh, over 30 years ago, uh, my journey into this field began. I was 15 years old uh, at a revival service and felt the Lord impress me um, upon me um, to tell my pastor he was calling me into uh, gospel ministry. And so I did. Um, and of course, my pastor needed to take that to the board of deacons. And in the interim time, I was beginning to doubt, did, Lord, did I really hear you say this? You know, what do 15-year-olds know? They couldn't find their way out of a wet paper bag with a hole in it, you know? So uh, I asked the Lord to confirm that for me. He did. He gave me a dream, a very vivid one. I remember that dream very clearly to this day. The first scene unfolded. I was standing in the middle of a field of wheat uh, by myself, all alone. There was nobody else around. And there was a sense of urgency that the, the wheat was ready to harvest. And I felt this overwhelming sense of urgency. And then the scene changed and I was looking down at my feet and I saw at my feet a broken stalk of wheat and I reached down where it was broken and straightened it up and it was made whole. Years later, I was in seminary, uh, New Orleans Baptist Seminary, and uh, finishing up my MDiv and pastoral ministries and not knowing exactly which direction the Lord wanted me to go. Um, I um, was exploring several things. Uh, I didn't have the sense that he was calling me into the pastorate. I'd served in a few pastoral roles before, uh, but didn't sense that he was calling me into that area. So I was praying, asking others to pray for me, um, uh, spent some time fasting, and during my time fasting, the Lord gave me that exact same dream again, except this time, the second scene was more pronounced. And I realized at that moment that the Lord was calling me into a ministry of Christian soul care and healing. Um, and as I went through my doctoral program in psychology and counseling at the seminary, uh, I uh, began to sense that the Lord was uh, moving me uh, again uh, deeper into this and that I uh, would have greater impact by teaching as opposed to simply counseling. Um, and I had the experience of being able to teach a course there. And then uh, now uh, 27 years later, I've been teaching in this field, uh, teaching in this field. So, uh, thus was born really my mission uh, to train kingdom servants to do kingdom work through a ministry of Christian soul care and healing. That's what I do. That's what I do. Um, this gift 
to fund this endowed chair. Thank you so much. What a wonderful gift. Uh, let me tell you what this means, not just for me, but um, for many others. Um, so here at HCU in the Department of Counseling, we graduate approximately 50 students per year. Uh, that's 50 at the master's level, most of whom will go on to get licensed. So let's just imagine that those 50 grads each year, uh, I've been doing this, this is now my fifth year here. Again, I've been teaching 27 years, so two other Christian universities prior to here. But in my five years here, that means we have graduated over 250 graduates. Now, not all of them will get licensed, but most of them will. But let's just, for the sake of argument, say state that you know, all of them get licensed. That's 250 grads. So they'll carry, each of them, a full caseload of about 25 clients each at any given time. And so that's 6,250 clients getting helped over five years. Now, that's a drop in the bucket compared to those 14,000 800 per year and probably a lot more than that now but that's not insignificant by any stretch of the imagination so some of them will also become faculty uh, and i have had the blessing of being able to be a part of the training of other faculty now at other institutions tr doing this very same thing some will supervise students in their practicum and internships and so they will have opportunity to contribute to the development of future counselors as well. So it's a dynamic process. This is a great honor. And I think the uh, university administration, the trustees and the foundation, uh, so many people, my students, my lovely wife who is here, um, it, it's, a, it's a great honor. And I'm deeply grateful for it. I have to say that while it is a great honor, and I want to bear that well, it's not my reward. Um, my reward is to someday get to heaven and have somebody come up to me and said, you helped train my school counselor. And because of your faithfulness, I didn't take my life. And I raised four kids, pastors and teachers now. And they have kids, all of them walking with Christ. My reward is to get to heaven and to have somebody come up to me and say, because you trained my marriage and family therapist. You saved our marriage. And we discipled our kids in the ways of Christ. And my son uh, is now an accountant and he works on the board of several nonprofits, Christian nonprofits. And because of you, many women in domestic violence shelters today receive Christ centered soul care. And here is the fruit of your labors. My reward is to hear you had a part in training my counselor and it saved me from depression. And because of you, your contribution, I later became a missionary and I took the gospel to an unreached people group and they heard the gospel for the first time. That, my friends, will be my reward. What I want to hear is well done, my good and faithful servant. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. And um, of course, all of us stand here today to tell the O'Quinn Foundation Thank you for enabling those kinds of dreams and aspirations and counseling. So to the Ben Foundation on this occasion, to Rob and Bess, our, our friends, especially after our trip to Israel some years ago, 
to Mick Pritchett, Jeffrey Payne, and other leaders and influencers of the O'Quinn Foundation. To you, we offer these heartfelt words of gratitude for the life-changing impact that this gift will have on the university, which in turn will have on students and families and generations to come. As a foundation, you all have thoughtfully seen a massive need throughout our culture, and you've stepped up to respond to it. Our world has always been a mess. Uh, any student of history can pick a spot in the world cultural map and identify a mess, morally and spiritually. The research and practical observation both combine to tell us that we are truly experiencing something of a mental health crisis in our culture. The causes of it run deep, and as always with respect to mental, physical, and spiritual health, the causes often find their sources in family struggles compounded by health issue, by physical health issues, financial pain, and other sources of hardship. These causes produce habits and patterns of behavior, often called culture, not necessarily a good culture, patterns of behavior that we are handing down are re and, and are reinforcing, and thus we have this widespread loss of resilience and hope. These broken habits of culture often have deep spiritual and psychological roots. St. Augustine, in his Confessions, a great autobiographical statement of his own moral and psychological needs that led to his conversion, expressed it in an oft-quoted phrase, expressed the deep causes of our brokenness. The well-known phrase is, You have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you. Specifically, there is a deep chasm between, on the one hand, why and how God made us and for what reasons God made us, and what the deep structures of our own health and well-being are. There's a chasm between that on the one hand and how, in fact, we behave. There, the chasm between our wayward personal and cultural habits and the kind of people we are becoming by those, by those cultural habits. We believe that our counseling area is capable, is prepared to tap into the deep roots of the broken and restless hearts all around us. And it's the O'Quinn Foundation that with this generous gift is enabling us not only to speak to these needs individually, but to provide great opportunities for healing and restoration, the restoration of persons, families, and ultimately culture. God bless all of you, and thank you. Rob. Thank you, Dr. Sloan and Dr. Cook. I, I'm going to be not even close to following any one of your statements, but I'll start off by giving a little introduction. John O'Quinn was my, I met John O'Quinn in 1990, and he became my real estate partner real estate investments. He never invested in real estate. And so from 1998 to 19, 2009, when he passed away, tragically, we were partners and, and, and never had a crossword, never had, uh, never had a fuss ever. And we were both complicated men to begin with too. So everybody, nobody could understand how we all got along. But, but not, so I got to know him obviously, and I knew his mission. And he had he had demons, just like we all have demons. And he had mental health issues, and I helped help take him to places to work with him. And in, in, oh, between 1990 and 2000, and in 2000 he went to I took him to Mitiger, and uh, he went up there and he found out they were having financial problems. So he comes back from comes back to Houston and um, says, Rob, I want to meet your good friend Corby Robinson, chairman of the board of Baylor. Said, that's no problem. Call Corby up. He said, I'm, I'll be dad gum if I'm going to have to get in my airplane and go 2,000 miles to dry out at some other city when we have the world's greatest medical center right here in Houston and no place to treat addiction and, and mental health issues. And so we'll make a long story short. Through Corby, John O'Quinn, and Philip Begeer, uh, we we were successful in bringing Mediger to we film Mediger to Houston. And in my one of the things I've been most blessed with was I served as chairman 
as a board representative for the Baylor College of Med from Menninger for eight years, and we started from scratch and built it up, and it's still very successful. And I owe that what that opportunity I had to Mr. O'Quinn, and I then I started getting involved with the foundation, and he made me do site visits, and uh, to. And just to further amplify, Corby and I in 2000 went to um, John and said, John, and I was married to a, a father at the time. And and so John, I mean, Corby said to John, John, you got all this money, Rob's investing it for you in real estate, but you need to see, start giving your money away. And John was listening to him like that and then said, I'm giving my grandfather's money away. He never saw his name on a building or plaque on any building where all the, all the money went from the Cohen Foundation. And same thing with my wife, Francie Fodder. And so that registered with John. So in 2000, he said, well, let's start going to work and let's find mental health institute hospitals and I want to start giving my money away. So between 2000 and 2005, I think we gave away about $70 million. And before that, he had really, that he, he didn't open up the pocket, but and I just want to give you a little background of where to how I got involved with it. And then the mental health issue is kind of like Dr. Cook said. I I had mental health, I had demons in my family and people that I cared about. And uh, and so see, working with Med Mediger, and, and I was able to bring some, when we had a change in, uh, in administration, I was able to find two doctors in Henry Ford and, uh, and um, in Michigan and bring recruit both of them. When I started in Mediger as chairman, we didn't have a doctor under 70 years old. And so we needed, I wanted some younger doctors. And so we had a, and fortunately I found two and we recruited them to Mediger and they both had done very well and successful and helped build up the clinic. And, uh, and so long story short, one of them decided he wanted to go on his own. He said, you know, this, I just want to run. I want to put, Serve more people, and Medigar didn't take insurance in, you know. And so, so I recruited him to my building. He offers right across the hall, and so I refer a patient. I get calls every day, every day. Best heard one this morning from tragic lady who shared with me, and I get calls every day. And I got, I have the resource and the ability to refer them to the best right there, and one of them offices in my building. So that's what the mission was told on me by John O'Quinn. And I would never ever could thank him enough. The second thing is he bestowed on me, he put me, got me involved with the foundation in 2000. And I met him with a site visit, a children's assessment center in the village. I'm sure you all know about that. These children and, and then, um, and you know, my greatest joy in life is running this foundation and referring people to mental health and help save their lives. I mean, and, and I cannot tell you what this gift would mean to John if he was alive, because this is right, this is what he wanted this foundation to do, is to help mental health issues and counsel, and it is a world's crisis right now. So I want to go in and thank everybody here, Dr. Sloan, Dr. Cook, Charles B., for having us out here today and for coming to us with this gift. I mean, this is, I mean, you couldn't have, I mean, thank you for coming to us first. I mean, I mean that. It means so much to the trustees and uh, and um, about him. we we know this grant will help position HCU counseling department as a world class designation for research and scholarship, help attract top caliber students and faculty, and facil fa facilitate the education of new generation of counselors who can make a difference in the field of medicine, which is so needed. God bless y'all. Thank you. Rob, thank you so much. We are, we are so honored to be able to associate the work and name of Houston Christian University with the O'Quinn Foundation, with all of you, with Mick, with you, Rob, Bess, Jeff. Thank you so much. It, it's such an incredible blessing to us to be associated with the mission that you have and the mission that you all have expressed through this incredibly generous gift. I want to lead us in a dedicatory prayer. Lord, we thank you for 
the opportunity that each of us has this day to be an agent of your work, your healing, your blessing to others. Lord, on this occasion, we especially thank you for John O'Quinn, the O'Quinn Foundation, for the leaders of it, the trustees, and for all who lead, and for the way they have directed so generously and honorably this gift so that we might be instruments of your peace in the lives of others. Lord, we ask you to bless every person that comes, that teaches, every person that counsels, and especially every person that comes under the umbrella and the auspices of this opportunity made possible by the O'Quinn Foundation for healing, for restoration, for recovery, for health. We ask you for this blessing. We thank you for this time together, and we ask you to bless faculty members and staff all over this university who at this very moment are leading and guiding and counseling. I thank you for the families of the trustees of the O'Quinn Foundation and leaders of the O'Quinn Foundation. I ask you to bless their children and grandchildren, spouses, and all those that come under the influence of their wisdom. We ask these blessings, Father, in the strong name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Thank you.